Hello, today we are looking at fluorescent proteins. So let's have a recap of protein structure. The sequence of amino acids are protein primary structure has a direct bearing on the 3D structure of the protein. Secondary structure forms through hydrogen bonds in the backbone. Tertiary structure is formed through interactions between the R groups of amino acids. These all help to determine a protein's function. Structural DNA binding channel forming enzymatic receptor. Some species have resolved proteins that perform an unusual function, the absorbance of light at a specific wavelength and then emission of light at a different wavelength. Please note this is not the same as bioluminescence, this is where some spe some specifies some species can generate their own light. This is a green fluorescent protein, this is a protein that can absorb and emit light. Its structure means that it can absorb the energy excitation on the blue part of the spectrum and release a small amount of energy emission in the green part of the spectrum. The protein is named after the kind of light that it emits. DFP was extracted by Shimomura in the 1960s from a jellyfish, Aquaria Victoria, found in the Puget Sound Pacific Ocean, just on the northwest coast of USA. Chalfi expressed GFP in bacteria in the 1990s, and Cyan modified and mutated the DFP gene and therefore protein to produce a range of colours. Structure function. Other people also use red fluorescent protein isolated from a total species called Distosoma. So in this diagram here, you can see the range of colours derived from GFP and RFP. And the different wavelengths, etc. So, how does GF GFP fluoresce? GFP has 238 amino acids. Only three amino acids in GFP are required for its fluorescent properties serine, tyrosine, and glycine. These undergo chemical modifications to form the light handling core of the protein called the chromophore. The use of GFP has several key traits that make it so valuable in research. It can be fused to another protein without affecting its function. It is modifiable to chromophore can be modified to allow GFP to emit different colours. It is non-toxic and to therefore be added to live cells for experiments with no harmful effects. It is heritable if an organism has GFP added to its genome then it will be passed to its offspring. GFP is commonly used as a commonly used tool in a research lab and is used for a vast array of biological functions such as tagging genes for figuring out the expression, acting as a biosensor or cell marker and studying protein protein interactions. It acts as a label to allow tracking visualization of cells, tissues, organs, and organisms, and even at the subcellular level. So you can link a mitochondrial protein to GFP, and GFP will be added to the mitochondria and will light it up. Also, GFP tad cy cytoskeleton and cell membrane proteins you can see here. So it's pressing of fluorescent proteins in bacteria. So here's a specific example of how we insert G GFP and R uh, RFP into bacteria for further experiments. So a plasmid is defined as a circular stretch of DNA and bacteria that can be passed between them. We can use plasmids such as vectors to introduce new DNA to bacteria in the lab. This is called transformation. There are two types of transformation, heat shock transformation and electroporosion. They use elevated temperatures and electric shock respectively to form pores in the cell membrane to allow the plasmid to enter the bacterial cell. The plasmids have a gene encoding for the fluorescent protein in them and also a gene encoding for resistance for a specific antibiotic. We can then select for the bacteria that have taken up the plasmid using antibiotics. Only the bacteria that have taken up the plasmids will have the gene to survive the antibiotic. So essentially, the ones that don't have will get killed. Bacteria can have approximately 1,000 plasmids per cell. So you can see here, example plasmid design. So you've got the gene coding GFP, the gene encoding resistance to antibiotic, and bacillin So what that happens here is, is if you, were to, if you were to treat these colonies with ampicillin or canamycin, the ones that have got the plasmid in it, they, the, the GFP in it, that would not die, but the ones that don't would die with ampicillin or canamycin treatment. You can analyse bacteria expressing GFP and RFP. We can treat agar plates of bacteria containing different fluorescent proteins, a common example is seen below. So imagine you are working with bacteria that are carrying plasmids that express either GFP or RFP. Look at the images of bacteria plates below. So one plate has been treated with antibiotics, ampicillin, and one with the antibiotic canamycin, and one has no treatment. On all three plates, red fluorescent, green fluorescent, and wild type, wild type normal, resistance genes have been treated. Only the fluorescent protein expressing plasmid has the appropriate antibiotic resistance gene. Take a moment and look at this. So look at plates one to three and answer the following questions. Which fluorescent protein plasmid has antibiotic resistance gene? So think about this here. So looking at the CRA 
LOXP tool. So this is a tool used to alter the DNA of a cell bacteria. It allows these sections to modify, delete, or turn on a specific gene, section of DNA in a specific cell. The system consists of a single enzyme, CRE recombinase, that rearranges DNA when it recognizes two LOXP signals as sets of DNA. There are two simple rules regarding this. If the LOSP signals point in the same direction, the intervening DNA will be deleted. So CRE LOSP tool is main usually, main usually to delete, mainly used to delete the DNA between the LSOP sites shown in A. However, if the LOSP signals point in opposite directions, the intervening DNA will be flipped and vetted. You can see that in B. So here's the example of the CRE LOSP tool. So you've got the promoter which drives gene expression of the gene next to it. The NGFP, green fluorescent protein, the RFP, red fluorescent protein, the YFP, yellow fluorescent protein, the CFP, cyan fluorescent protein, and the black cyan goes the LOSP site. So what could happen in a cell where the CRE LOSPL rules were applied to stretch of DNA is there more one is a one more, more than one possible outcome. Start thinking about that yeah let me know in the comments below. So you can have this one possible outcome right so Promoter, NGFP, YFP, RFP, CR3. So try and have it if you are got to the end of this video and enjoyed it and do try and like the other three outcomes and let me know in the comments below, please. Thank you.